Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Sarah and I am a flower farmer and my company is called Bloom and Grey. And last week I was really, really busy doing daily vlogs on uh, seed starting and getting the field ready for the season ahead. And this week really is going to be no different except I'm not gonna be daily vlogging. It was definitely a challenge, but I, really appreciated all of the great feedback from that. So I'm going to try and come up with a more regular schedule for posting videos on YouTube, just so that you can all keep up to date with what is going on on the farm. So this week is going to be more seed sowing and this morning I'm just going to be potting up all of the dahlias that I dug up last week they've just been sitting here on the side. They were a little bit damp, so I thought it would maybe be a good idea to let them dry out a bit, just so that they, I'm not encouraging rotting and things like that. I don't know if that's the right way to go about it, but anyway, what I'm going to do today is clean up a few of the tubers, remove some rotten ones or some bad ones, and then I'm gonna pot them up in some mushroom crates, which are, the blue crates that I have over there. I bought, I, I didn't buy them, I got them free from a pub that I used to work at. Those mushroom crates come in really handy, handy, so I would suggest if you feel like you could do with some of those, then go and ask a local pub or a restaurant. They might just have some of those lying around that they want to get rid of. And I'm also hoping to, to do a bit of an update on the shipping container this week. Uh, it's been a little bit quiet on the shipping container front basically because I've just been so busy on the flower farm and Rob uh, has also been a little bit busy and he's doing some fair spreading this week in the fields so hopefully I'll have an update for you on that and I'm just going to get cracking with putting some of these dahlias up in the mushroom crates. So I've got my stack of mushroom crates ready here and I've got some compost, which is literally just some cheapy stuff that I bought from the farm shop. It's nothing special in particular. So what I'm going to do is just have a look over these tubers and see if I can clean them up a little bit. So I've got my secateurs in my pocket and I'm just looking at this one. This is a Rosemary Dawn tuber and this is my favorite dahlia from last year. I absolutely love it so I definitely want to try and get some cuttings from that one but I'm not sure if you can see here but this tuber is just looking a little bit horrible it's got some white mold on it when you actually oh look it's come apart it's quite rotten inside so I'm going to just trim that down with my secateur and get rid of that So I'm literally just going to chop it off and because we've got such clay soil it's really hard to get the tubers cleared down. What I'm going to do next year I think is when I'm digging these up I'm going to build a table where I can wash off the dahlias. So the rest of it actually looks okay, just giving all of the tubers a little squeeze just to, to feel whether they're firm or not. And that's all looking good. So I'll get that potted up into one of these crates. And sometimes I will put newspaper or cardboard in the bottom of the crate just so that all of the compost doesn't fall out. But in other times, I don't. <laughs> so actually that's very soft, I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm just gonna put a thin layer of compost in the bottom of this tray. This is actually quite coarse. It's got some wood chips and stuff in it. So it shouldn't fall through the holes too much. So I've put a thin layer on the bottom. Actually, I can maybe do to just trim all of these hairy roots off because they aren't really necessary. And then I'll just top it up 
around the tuber with a bit more compost. I'll just leave that half of the tray free for another tuber. So I think I've got another rosemary dawn around here somewhere so I'm going to probably put that in the same tray next to this one and then we've got the family staying together. So while I am cleaning up these dahlias I thought I would just tell you what I know about dahlia tubers and for a tuber to be viable to produce a plant it needs to have three components which is the tuber and then the neck of the tuber and then the crown i think that is the right terminology for it and often you will see that the tuber will break at the neck where it attaches to the crown and that will mean that i'm going to have to lose that tuber because it's just not going to be able to transfer the energy to produce a shoot from the crown so that is how i am cleaning them up yeah so that is how i am tidying them up and getting rid of those dead tubers so um in this tray i've got one two three four five six tubers getting off to a start so i'm just going to cover these up with a bit of compost i might actually crack out the heat mat later on and i might just put a few of them on a heat mat just to get them going I need to get a bigger heat mat I think because I'm not actually going to be using it really for any seedlings this year and my heat mat isn't on a thermostat so if we have a really hot day and the heat mat's left on then obviously that's just going to bake everything but it would be nice if I had a heat mat that I could control the temperature of and then I could keep it at a steady sort of 20 degrees or whatever so maybe I'm going to have to look into buying one of those at some point but at the moment we're just going to make do with what we've got. The other thing that I can tell you about tubers is that a couple of years ago I stored mine in a place that wasn't particularly dry or really a good place to keep the dahlias and when I uncovered them after a few months of them being in storage they had all of this sort of white mould growing on it if you can see that on the camera and I was I was like oh I've lost all of the dahlias and I'm just gutted because they've all gone mouldy and that's it I'm not gonna have any dahlias this year and I did a bit of research and I found out that you can actually dip them in a mild bleach solution so what I did was I brought them all out of storage and then I got myself a bucket of um, water and bleach I can't remember the exact dilution of bleach but it was probably something very minimal and I basically just dunked all of the tubers in the solution and then I actually brought them into the house where it was I knew that it was going to be dry and warm and dried out the dahlias just to try and stop the mold from growing and that worked really well so um, if you've got mold issues I would recommend looking that up and seeing what the bleach solution is that you can use for the dahlias and you'll be fine you can get rid of the mold so i've got all of the dahlias dug uh not dug <laughs> i've got them all potted up in these mushroom crates behind me and then i've just given them a nice water so what i'm going to go and do now is i've got some sweet william plants that i started last summer and i'm going to take them across to the polytunnel i think and i'm going to plant them in there and see what else i've got that might be able to plant in the polytunnel i was just going to plant these snapdragons in there but i just feel like the plants are a little bit too small so i'm going to wait for them to grow on a little bit more before i plant them in the polytunnel just because i've just got a feeling that they'll get lost in there if um, i put them in there whilst the plants are so small so let's go and find some things to plant in the polytunnel. So here I am at flower field number two and I'm just checking the greenhouse for some germination and I can't see much just yet. I have just noticed that this uh, limonium has germinated here. The cornflower 
has started germinating there's one in that cell that I can see that's coming up and then the amaranthus is looking quite good can you see the plants in there just ignore that label on the top because that's not what it is but yeah the amaranthus is the, probably the one that's coming up strongest to begin with and it's just a matter of waiting a few more days for everything else but what I'm planning to do today is plant out the sweet williams in the polytunnel I just need to clear um, the bed that they're going in so I'm going to put them in that bed sorry I can't talk and turn the camera around at the same time because the microphone directional so it has to be facing the noise for it to pick it up so once I've planted those out I'm hoping that I can start clearing out this field behind me the other day I started this is where my sunflowers were last year and when I tried to pull them up in autumn I think I just had burnout and I just didn't have enough energy to pull them up but I pulled a few up the other day when I was in here and they're really easy to come up so I don't think it's going to take me long at all to go through that and get it cleaned up so that's going to be a, a nice job I like it when you do jobs that make a big difference and afterwards you can see the fruits of your labour so then I also need to clean up a little bit in this entrance way because there's some weeds and things that I pulled out um, and I just need to put them in a wheelbarrow and get them on the muck heap so a few people have asked about my ranunculus they wanted to see how they were getting on and they're still quite small but I'm sure with the warm weather they won't take long at all to perk up and I think I might give them a foliar feed with some seaweed or something at some point soon just to give them the boost an extra boost so yeah I'm gonna weed this bed and start getting those sweet williams planted out Okay, so I've just finished planting out a few of the sweet williams. I've actually got two trays left to plant, but the job is really annoying me <laughs> because the plants are quite pot bound and the ground is a little bit hard in the polytunnel. So I'm getting a bit sick of doing that. So I thought I would just come outside and have a go at starting to rip up a few of these beds just because I'm quite excited about doing that. So that should break up my day a little bit. So I'm gonna have a couple of hours doing that now. So I got the field looking pretty good just after about an hour and a half. Uh, all these jobs that I've been putting off just hardly take any time at all. So uh, I've pulled up the sunflower stalks from last year, I've pulled up the mallow from last year and I have sort of kicked the stems off the dahlias um, ready to do whatever I'm going to do with the tubers underneath think I'm going to rotivate it so yeah that's looking nice and clear in there now and I'm just going to take you around the corner to show you this little area I always forget that I've got this area because it's sort of hidden but this year I think I might get it sorted so that I can use it in the future I think I'm going to cover it over with weed membrane and just let everything underneath it die off this is the area it's sort of like a, a square behind the polytunnel so that's maybe it, I'm not even going to try and guess how many meters squared it might be but it's a decent area and I usually forget about it so I'm going to 
uh, get that sorted so whenever I come to wanting more growing space I've got that there it's quite a decent size um, so I'm gonna call it that for a day because I'm going to go in and have my tea and I've got lots of things to do tomorrow I've got to get the, the sweet Williams planted out the rest of them that I couldn't be, couldn't be bothered earlier on to do would rather be riving around in the field productive day again and it's all down to this youtube channel i have to do it because i want to make the content so i'm really glad that i started the channel because it's making me more proactive so i'll see you tomorrow So I've managed to get my planting done in the polytunnel and it's looking nice and tidy in here now. I've had a little bit of a tidy up and a sweep up. I just love sweeping. It's one of my favourite jobs. It just makes everything look better, doesn't it? So I've had a tidy up and I've also planted some Dorcas that was autumn sown or summer sown last year. And yeah, it's looking good. So in, at the moment in the polytunnel, this bed is filled with ranunculus. This bed here is also filled with ranunculus and then this bed has some oregano in it um, which I trimmed back a few weeks ago and is looking like it's coming back now and then I've just planted this bed of sweet williams and what else I'm going to grow in here this summer obviously once the ranunculus have finished flowering then they're going to get pulled up and the corms are going to get stored ready for next year but i'm hoping to fill up the rest of this space with zinnias snapdragons stocks and flocks stocks and flocks uh, maybe something else i'm not sure yet so we're going to have lots of production going on in this in this polytunnel hopefully this year um i'm not always that good at planning the successions in the polytunnel so i often end up with periods of it being empty in here which isn't ideal because it is a valuable growing space so what i'm going to do now is i might have a go with the rotavator so i've got the rotavator in here and this is what it looks like from the last time i tried to use it it just got totally clogged up with sticky mud so hopefully it'll be able to go through if not i'll wait a little bit longer for it to dry out but i really want to get the other half of the field rotivated mulched and then covered over with weed membrane so that it's done and dusted so i don't know if you can hear me because i've got the rotivator going but i'm going to wear goggles to rotivate don't laugh at me but it's because last time i was rotivating a stone came up and hit me in the eye and it was quite painful luckily I think I had my eye closed so it didn't actually hit my eyeball but I'm gonna prevent any injuries by wearing these and let's see whether the ground is workable So I'm having to stop rotivating because the belt has come off the, ro the rotivator and I am not quite sure how to put it back on. And the other reason I'm stopping is just because it is getting too wet. I think that's part of the reason why the belt came off was because it was clogging up with soil and it's probably pushed it off. So I'm gonna 
leave it to dry I think for a couple of days I don't think we'll forecast any rain but my plan for the area is to mulch it with the straw and alpaca poo mixture that I've got sitting in a pile over there and I've also got some organic compost as well that I bought by the ton last year uh, I can't remember how many tons I bought last year but it was a big tractor trailer load anyway and I've got some left so that was meant to be for these beds here to the right and yeah so mulching the beds with the combination of those two things and then get them covered with weed membrane and then they're going to be left covered until I plant out in them so probably mid may late may time so i'm gonna go and think i'm gonna sow a couple of seeds uh, i've got a bit of time left before i need to leave this afternoon and yeah i'm gonna sow some half hardy annuals so maybe some sunflower seeds uh i'm not sure what else but uh, when i go and get the seeds i'll come back to you with what i'm deciding to sow today so I've just been and collected my seeds from the other greenhouse and I've done the same thing that happens every single year which is I've lost my label writing pen and I only ever seem to have one of them so hopefully it will appear somewhere I've spent ages looking for it so I'm running out of time now to get anything sewn before this afternoon so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to tell you what I'm planning on sowing this afternoon and then because we're out of time you'll have to catch up with me on the weekend. So I'm, I'm planning on uploading twice this week, tomorrow which is Wednesday and Sunday as well. So you'll catch up with me on Sunday and I'll tell you all about what I'm sowing in more detail hopefully so this is um my march sewing envelope and i've got various things in here and some things in my pocket so i've got all my cosmos seeds here which i'm going to start off and then i've got my artichokes and my sunflower varieties more sunflowers sunflowers some crespedia I did actually sow some of that the other day in a packet that I had left over from last year but this is uh, fresh seed so I might I might sow some of that I'm not sure zinnias they're going to go in the polytunnel I'm gonna sow those what else funny tails I've already sown some of that might sow some more of that as well some auric some ami more corn cockle and more sunflowers so i'm gonna either have to buy myself a new another new pen or have a really good look for my other one uh so yeah hopefully it'll just magically turn up somewhere because i just hate looking for things so anyway i'll catch up with you after this on sunday i'm hoping to get lots more field work done this week and getting the just getting the beds prepped ready for spring planting i feel really on top of myself this year so i'm really hoping that this is going to be the start of a new routine every year that's just going to be a lot easier to manage because of all the landscape fabric so i couldn't do it all myself without the landscape fabric so i'm really glad that i've made the investment to put that in so thanks so much as ever for watching and i'll see you again next time <laughs> <laughs>